Manx Radio's update with Dave Moore. The time is five o'clock. You're listening to Manx Radio. I am Dave Moore and this is Update. Welcome to the programme. Half an hour of the latest news in the art of man plus Manx sport, business and travel updates along with the newsmakers in person coming up. A teenager has appeared in court today accused of stabbing a woman in Peel. Meanwhile, two people have been arrested after what's been described by police as suspicious items at a property in Port Aaron. And the island's electric vehicle charging network is being upgraded. That's all coming up in the next half an hour. But first of all, the update news headlines with Chanel Sakou. Fast am I. Fast am I. A teenager has appeared in court today accused of stabbing a woman in Peel. Dylan Craig Minton of Karoo Court has been charged with wounding the female victim with intent. Manx Utilities has announced plans to upgrade the island's electric vehicle charging network. The authority says the work due to begin next month will make the network smarter, faster and more reliable. And the mountain road has reopened following work to remove Manx Grand Prix racing equipment from it. The Department of Infrastructure has confirmed the route between Ramsey and Douglas is now fully open. Tomorrow's road closure will no longer be required. In international news, the Princess of Wales has revealed she's completed her chemotherapy treatment. Kate has made the comments in a video message in which she says her focus now is on staying cancer-free. The parole boards approved the release of a murderer who raped and stabbed a woman 60 times. The family of Joanne Tulip, who was killed in Northumberland on Christmas Day in 1997, says the decision's outrageous. And NHS staff and patients have been giving evidence about the impact of the pandemic on them and the health service. The third phase of the COVID inquiry is looking at how healthcare across the UK has been affected. Those are your headlines. News at six. Thank you, Chanel. Looking at the weather now, cloud will gradually thicken this evening with the risk of a few spots of rain and a fresh to strong southwest wind. The winds increasing strong to near gale force with rain by the end of the night. Rain at first tomorrow will quickly clear to leave bright or sunny intervals, but also the risk of showers later in the afternoon and evening. Fresh to strong west-northwest winds with a top temperature of 14 Celsius and sunshine and blustery showers on Wednesday, some of which may be heavy. A strong northwest wind and a highest temperature then of only 13 Celsius. Manx Glass and Glazing don't just do the big jobs. It's easy to repair broken greenhouse glass at Manx Glass and Glazing. For greenhouse glass cut to size, call 674 573. If you run a small business or just need more room in the back, Dillshaw Vehicles has the perfect van or light commercial for all your needs and can sort out any finance. Based in the Tremode Estate, view fillshawvehicles.im or call 49 51 49. A great night's sleep got even better with Zed's Bedding Store. From quality bell dorm bed linen and mattress protectors, fleece and woven throws, to luxury duvets from the fine bedding company. Zed's Bedding Ramsey, next to Isle of Man Bank. SMS Trading, new and second-hand furniture. From flat pack to fully built. See our range at Unit 24, Gladstone Park, Ramsey. All island delivery and man in a van service available. Call SMS Trading on 315 151 or find SMS Trading on Facebook. Visit Ramsey Craft Centre at Church Walks and Pool Square for beautiful yarns, fabrics, buttons, craft kits, patterns, in fact all you need for your craft works. Open Monday to Saturday. Visit Ramsey Craft Centre St Pool Square or find us on Facebook for opening times, news and offers. You're listening to the Isle of Man's quintessential daily news and current affairs roundup. Update on Manx Radio. And we begin with the news that a teenager has appeared in court today accused of stabbing a woman in Peel. And joining me live in the studio is news editor Tessa Hawley. Tessa, what can you tell us? So, Dave, this follows an incident in the west of the island last Wednesday. That was the 4th of September. Today, 17-year-old Dylan Craig Minton of Kerry Corps appeared before the Deputy High Bailiff at Douglas Courthouse. He's been accused of the offence of wounding with intent and of being concerned in the supply of cannabis. 
cannabis. We're aware, though, of the serious incident that took place in Peel last week near to the QE2 high school. Are these charges connected to that? They are. So the allegation is that the teenager went to a lane which runs parallel to Bluebell Close that evening and carried out the stabbing on the female victim. The prosecutor told the court today that it's the Crown's case that he stabbed her eight times, saying she suffered significant wounds to her back, her groin, arm and abdomen. The court was told she was taken to hospital by a friend following the incident, where she then received medical treatment for her injuries. So Tessa, what happens next? In court today, Mr Minton's advocate made no application for bail, which means the teen will be remanded in custody until his next court appearance. Now, under Manx law, people are treated as adults from the age of 17 and therefore go through the adult court process. However, due to the fact that he's not yet 18, Mr Minton has been remanded to the secure care home Cronk Solish instead of the Isle of Man prison. An application to adjourn the case was granted and he will next appear in court again on the 17th of September. You're listening to the Isle of Man's quintessential daily news and current affairs roundup. Update on Manx Radio. Two people have been arrested after suspicious items were found at a property in Port Erin yesterday. More than 60 homes were evacuated while police responded. Amy Griffiths was there this morning. Amy, tell us what you know so far. Well, at around four o'clock yesterday afternoon, police cordoned off a property in Perkbeg in Port Erin after suspicious items were found there. After those items were found, specialists investigated the site and made the decision to evacuate all residential properties within a 100-metre radius of the scene. Police have told Manx Radio that 61 homes in total were evacuated as a precautionary measure. A rest centre was then set up by the Methodist Church for those that had to be evacuated, where people could have shelter and also be able to get any support they needed. Eyewitnesses on the ferry from Liverpool last night also say the sailing was delayed to allow a specialist bomb squad from the UK to board and attend the scene. Russian MHK Michelle Haywood, who represents the constituency, also took to social media to say the bomb squad were on the way. Police confirmed that they and specialists from the UK attended two addresses following concerns, the one in Perkbeg and also another in Port St Mary in the Craig and Lee estate. They've assessed the threat posed and say there is no longer an existing threat to residents in the vicinity and anyone evacuated was able to go home in the early hours of the morning. And I think we understand there have been arrests. That's right. Two people have been arrested by armed officers in Port St Mary. We haven't yet been told what they've been arrested on suspicion of, though. And while police continue their investigation, the public's being asked not to speculate. So when you were in Port Erin this morning, what did you see? Well, it was all really quiet by the time I got there. I went to the Methodist Church to see if anyone was still there, but the curtains were open and the lights were off. So it looked like anyone who had used the rest centre had already made their way home. I did see one lonely police van drive by, presumably heading home after a long night though. And I went round to the Perkbeg estate. Again, all was quiet. There was still a police van in the drive of one property, but otherwise you'd never know anything had happened there. Amy Griffiths, thank you. You're listening to Update. This is Manx Radio and the Ireland's electric vehicle charging network is soon to be upgraded with work starting next month. The announcement from Manx Utilities comes as the authority also confirms a change in provider. Lewis Foster reports. The MUA says it's partnered with UK company Evolt Charging to help future-proof the island's EV infrastructure and make it easier and quicker than ever before for drivers to charge their vehicles. Current supplier Podpoint has withdrawn from the public charging market, it says. The number of electric vehicle registrations on the Isle of Man has grown to 1,377 over the past year. That's 71 more than the figure given in Timwald in April. There are currently 133 public charging points on the island. The work will start at Manx Utilities headquarters at Balakotia, the Comis Hotel and on Loch Promenade. Rapid charges already in place at the C Terminal and Tesco stores in Peel, Port Erin and Ramsey will not be replaced, it says, but will be integrated onto the new platform. During the work, the majority of existing single phase 7 kilowatt charging points will be upgraded to three phase 22 kilowatt units where possible. John Wannenberg is the chair of the Manx Utilities Authority and he told Lewis the work should turn around quickly. It starts next month and we should hopefully be completed by the end of this year. So it's a fairly quick transition. 
And uh, like it says here, there are over 1,300 vehicle registrations currently on the island. Not everybody will have a, a private charging point, as it were. So what if somebody's, say, go-to charging point, public charging point, is out of action? How will they know? There'll be a 24-hour number on the tower. So every, every single charging point will have a free phone number where the user can get hold of them. You're describing this as future-proofing uh, the network. Uh, how, how long do we expect this upgrade to last for until, say, the next upgrade is needed? Well, time will tell, but, I mean, this is going to be... Uh, this is really a robust infrastructure development for us. It's it's enhancing our capacity. It all depends. I mean, if, if tomorrow we get another 2,000 uh, EV cars... Uh, it'll be different. But I would imagine at least three years we get out of this. So how much is is this upgrade costing and how much does it cost each time the network has to be upgraded? Well, obviously, each time you upgrade it, there's more to upgrade. So I would imagine that would be the best part of £100,000 to do this. But um, it's not just straightforward. We we should... We, we, we will be getting some sort of form of compensation from Podpoint who are exiting the market. They're going to focus purely on the home market. Um, so there will be an arrangement which we'll come to with them as to how much we, they will help us towards the cost of that. Lewis, at the end of the day, infrastructure costs, you know, and we've got to invest in our in our infrastructure. The chair of Manx Utilities Authority, John Wallenberg, talking there to Manx Radio's Lewis Foster. We now move on to business. An Entain PLC announced today... An improved performance in the UK and Ireland has helped deliver a better-than-expected performance so far in the second half of 2024. The Isle of Man-based betting operator, which owns Ladbrokes and Coral, said the improving momentum delivered during the second quarter has continued, with online net gaming revenue growth during the second half of 2024 to date ahead of their expectations. Meanwhile, UK and European stocks rose today, overcoming last week's bearish sentiment. Wall Street's main indexes climbed this afternoon, recovering from a week of significant losses as investors stayed hopeful for a soft landing for the US economy before an important inflation report later this week. And this week in the US, two significant inflation reports are scheduled to be released, which may influence the Federal Reserve's upcoming interest rate decision. Oil climbed today as an impending hurricane near the US Gulf Coast contributed to a rebound in oil prices after significant losses the previous week. And gold prices increased today due to growing anticipation of a Fed Reserve interest rate cut next week, while investors looked forward to the US inflation report for more insight into the potential magnitude of the cut. Let's go on to the markets. The FTSE 100 is at 8266. That's up 1.03%. The Dow Jones at 4702, up 0.88%. And the Nasdaq at 16740, up 0.29%. At exchange rates, the pound against the dollar, 1.307 and against the euro 1.184 in commodities gold is at 2495 US dollars that's down 0.06% with Brent at 71.48 US dollars that's up 0.01% I'm running late again do you know where I put my car keys in the fridge where's my phone under the dog basket bye you haven't forgotten that we're seeing Ramsey Cook all later oh uh, no of, of course not um 5 p.m. is it Caught it a free. I'll be there. Life is busy. That's why Ramsey Crookall's team takes time to help you make a mindful investment decision. Considering all the options, giving you full control of your financial future. Less stress, more assurance. Forgot to put my shoes on. Oh. See how we can make your money work for you. Call 717171 or visit RamseyCrickle.com. Licensed and regulated by the Isle of Man Financial Services Authority. You're listening to the Isle of Man's quintessential daily news and current affairs roundup. Update on Manx Radio. A former MHK says government's done nothing about the highest housing crisis on the island and claims it's gone backwards since the general election three years ago. Peter Caron, who represented Onken and is a former leader of Liberal Vannon, has reiterated calls for restrictions on new homes being sold to off-island residents and wants government to launch a part equity mortgage scheme to help first-time buyers. The reality is there are solutions, there have been solutions, but the problem you've got is is you've got to get people in Timwald to actually address it. We need a proper part equity mortgage scheme where we don't create more inflation into the capital basis of the property market as it is now, as it's actually 
counterproductive and it's creating a social cancer. We need to be bringing into the planning process use and ownership. No one would object to people building houses in the countryside if we knew they were actually going for nests and not nest eggs. And what we need to do is in use and ownership, we need to develop the strategy of where we have certain houses soiled as far as the commercial ability, but not the quality. I mean, we look at these first time buyers houses, all right for people like me, sad old bachelors. But if you've got a wife and kids and you've got your kitchen in your living room, you're living on cheek by jowl, hardly any back garden. This is not how we should be looking after that generation. They're the generation we need to be investing in. And the answer has to be in planning, 20% of all new applications should be with restrictions on they've got to have Isle of Man worker status. They can't own it if they own a second residential property and they can't rent it out. And I think there should be a load of more land released if it's on that basis in order to bring the market to a reasonable conclusion than than it is at the moment. Because the danger will be the economy is going to collapse because there's no fiscal control over this lot as far as deficit spending. And what we're going to end up is a repeat to what we saw in the 70s. Few rich pickings were given by the rich and the poor got just left with lots of long-term debt and liability. Manx Radio Travel, driven by Keyside Tyres and Service Centre. Before we look at the travel, just a reminder, you can hear the full interview on the latest episode of Perspective with Phil Gorn, which can be downloaded as a podcast at manxradio.com. Right, on to the, uh, the travel, I should say. Uh, we'll start with sailings, and the Mananin is due to arrive into Douglas tonight at 10 o'clock on time. It's due to leave Liverpool at quarter past seven. However, the Manxman sailing that's due to leave Douglas at quarter to eight at the moment, there's a question mark over it. Uh, due to the forecast adverse weather, it is subject to possible disruption or cancellation, and a final decision will be made by the master at half past five. That's just under quarter of an hour from now. And if there is a knock-on, that will have a knock-on, of course, for the return from Haitian. So we'll all wait to see what happens at half five. Going on to matters at uh, Ronald's Way, and in terms of departures, uh, the quarter past five flight to the Logan Air service to London City was due to leave around about now. It's been delayed until 10 to 6. The Liverpool EasyJet flight, which was due to go at 20 to 6, is now going at 5 to 6. However, Logan Air's Liverpool is going at 6 o'clock on time. And their Edinburgh flight, which is due to go at 5 to 8, is also on time. Uh, Gatwick showing uh, 5 past 8 departure on schedule uh, from Ronald's Way. That's the EasyJet service. And in terms of the arrivals... Uh, the Liverpool EasyJet, which was due in a few minutes ago, should be in around 25 past 5. Everything else, the 25 past 5 in from Manchester, Logan Air. The Logan Air due in at 25 past 7 from Edinburgh. And the Gatwick at 25 to 8. The EasyJet flight are due on time. Also, the Liverpool Logan Air service is due to land at 5 to 8. And also a note that the Mountain Road which was due to be closed today and tomorrow, is now fully open. All the Manx Grand Prix signage has been removed, so the Mountain Road is back to normal. Ask how you can spread the cost interest-free at Keyside. Let's move on to sport now with Darren Timpson. Fast am I. Fast am I. Starting with FC Isle of Man. The Ravens are looking to put the disappointing one all draw with Berry behind them as they prepare to face Rams bottom away tomorrow evening. Saturday's goal scorer Sean Doyle says while it wasn't quite the result they wanted, it certainly wasn't all bad when it came to the team's performance. Work rate, character, togetherness as well. It's something that I think that we can pride ourselves on. So there's a lot of positives to take. Got to look forward to Tuesday because we don't have time to sort of look back and feel sorry for ourselves. Isle of Man athlete Regan Corrin has broken yet another Manx record in athletics after competing at the Southport Waterloo Open. The rising star cleared a height of 2.13 metres in the high jump to break Martin Aram's IOM under 20 record of 2.1 metres, which he set in 2001. The performance is still yet to be ratified by the European Athletics Association. However, if the result does get confirmed, Corrin will then move up to first in the European under 18 rankings by 2 centimetres. The rugby season began for Douglas and Vagabonds this weekend as both teams suffered defeat in their openers. Vagas went from being 8-5 up to losing 31-8 at the hands of Ormskirk on Saturday in the county's 3 ADM Langs Cheshire. 
Douglas were beaten by Waterloo 33 0 in the Regional 2 Northwest. In football, Corinthians have taken the top spot in the Canada Life Premier League after they beat Ramsey 3 0 to continue their winning start to the season. And finally, Michael Dunlop has been honoured today for his achievement in winning 29 Isle of Man TT races. The 35-year-old received an award at Parliament Buildings in Belfast and the reception was hosted by Northern Ireland Communities Minister Gordon Lyons. Dunlop broke the record of most wins at the Alaman TT at this year's event, surpassing the total set by his uncle Joey. This is Manx Radio. You're listening to Update and we move on now with a two-day conference getting underway this week to highlight the issue of domestic violence in the Isle of Man. Hosted by Victim Support and the Domestic Abuse Forum, the event aims to empower people and raise awareness about the work being undertaken in the island. And it starts this Wednesday. Their chief executive is Lorna Trevefen. Domestic abuse is a big issue on the island. I know the police see on average about two referrals a day and obviously we have high numbers as well and, and not all of those are reported to the police. So we wanted to showcase what support's available on the island, what the referral pathways are, so we'll be talking about that. But actually then we thought, well, there's some high-profile people who've been affected by domestic abuse in one way or another. So we've managed to secure David Challen, whose mother's murder conviction was quashed following legislation changes uh, in the UK. And uh, we've got Natalie Collins, who's a domestic abuse survivor and has turned that into a positive thing and is actually the creator of Own My Life programme, which is run on the island through Space for Action, which is one of the, the forum members. Diana Parks, CBE, obviously founder of the Joanna Simpson Foundation. That was because her daughter Jo was murdered uh, by Robert Brown. Uh, so she'll be talking about her experiences. And we've had a great take up for both days. Domestic abuse day is pretty much full and there's a few tickets left now for the victim support day but we're providing lunch and it's just a celebration uh, the second day more so than the, the first day but we don't want it all being doom and gloom we want to really showcase the seriousness of domestic abuse and the impact it can have victim support have held conferences in the past but domestic abuse is becoming more and more into the fore people are starting to talk about it more you know like we did with menopause a few years ago we want to kind of bring it into the public arena and we want to break down the taboos about talking about it and actually to say it's not okay but domestic abuse is happening and then we we want to look at how we can lower the numbers and obviously lower the incidence of domestic abuse. So a lot of the work that we're now doing as part of that forum and we'll be talking about on the day is that work, that intervention work, that support work. Um, and we, we just want to highlight it really so people understand what domestic abuse is and what to look for and what support is available. And that conference gets underway this Wednesday, September the 11th. You're listening to Max Radio. This is Update and Businesses on the Isle of Man are raising concerns about the potential economic impacts of proposed changes to the minimum wage. According to the Isle of Man Chamber of Commerce, the proposed move to harmonise the living and minimum wage by April 2025 could have far-reaching consequences both in the short and long term. Beth Espy has this report. In a written statement, the Chamber says a recent report commissioned by the island's Minimum Wage Committee, carried out by the London-based firm Pragmatics Advisory, has brought these concerns into sharp focus. The report highlights, they say, that raising the minimum wage to £13.73 in April next year could cost private and third sector businesses up to £188 million. While there are potential benefits, they say, the Chamber warns of significant challenges that could threaten the economic stability of many businesses. The proposed increase represents a 28% rise from the 2023 minimum wage rate of £10.75. The Chamber says to put that in perspective, the rise is approximately 14 times higher than the current inflation rate, which hovers around 2%. They believe such a rapid increase will put the island's businesses at a competitive disadvantage, potentially, they say, leading to layoffs, reduced hours or even closures. The Chamber of Commerce acknowledges the good intentions behind the government's push to raise the minimum wage. CEO Rebecca George says, We appreciate the commitment of Timwald and the Isle of Man government to support lower paid workers. However, she says, there are widespread concerns about the proposed timeline and its potential economic ramifications. The Chamber is urging the government to reconsider the April 2025 deadline and explore ways to provide support to businesses facing increased costs. They suggest a more gradual approach to the wage increase, allowing businesses time to adapt and prevent sudden economic shock. While the Chamber recognises, they say, the potential benefits of a higher minimum wage in improving living standards, they emphasise the impacts on the Manx economy that will vary, they say, across different sectors. They conclude that while the intention to harmonise the minimum and living 
living wages aligns with broader social policies, the proposed timeline and scale of the increase could have unintended negative consequences. They're calling on government to reconsider the approach to ensure what they call a balanced, sustainable path forward for both businesses and workers on the Isle of Man. Beth Espy reporting. To mark the Isle of Man Arts Council's 60th anniversary next year, £100,000 has been ring-fenced for arts projects and events. The Arts Development Officer is Martin Kane. It's for people to come to us with new ideas for events, basically something that's not happened here before or a new take on something that might have happened here before. Maybe events that have been put into new spaces, new areas, new parts of the island that don't usually get big events put into. It's a fund that is £100,000 in total. Uh, This is basically an additional source of funding. What Uh, happens at the moment is that um, if you have an event that you want to put on and you charge tickets for the event, Arts Council's mechanism for this is called an underwrite. You would say, well, it's going to cost me £2,000 to put the event on, but I actually think I'm only going to sell £1,000 worth of tickets. So I'm going to make a thousand pound loss and what arts council do at the moment is they will underwrite the event to that thousand pounds so you can put the event on and you don't lose any money you don't make any but you don't lose any what we've decided to do for this 60th anniversary in this extraordinary event fund is treat it more like a a grant so you can say my event is going to cost two thousand pounds and you can apply for all of the costs of the event and then when you sell your tickets you keep the money you keep the ticket money the idea being that you will then reinvest that back into maybe uh, the same event the following year or a new version of the event or something else creative to benefit the island.